Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I am a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. And today we are going to be talking about the nutritional requirements of cats. So cats are actually pretty special. Cats are considered obligate carnivores, which means they need meat in order to get the amino acids that they need to survive. Most animals are able to produce these amino acids. Cats they have to get it from their food. They have to get it from the meat that they're consuming that was able to produce it themselves. This means that feeding a cat a high quality meat first food is extremely, extremely important. In fact, back in about the 1980s, we had a mass killing of cats, completely accidental, but also completely preventable with just a little bit more research into their biology. During this time, most foods for both cats and dogs were very, very low in meat and predominantly corn and wheat based. A bunch of cats were dying of dilated cardiomyopathy, which is a heart condition that comes from a lack of taurine in the diet. So all of these cats were dying of this heart condition and it's because their bodies couldn't produce the taurine and they weren't getting enough taurine from their foods. Nowadays, all cat foods have at least added taurine in them so that we don't repeat this brutal part of our cat's history. But making sure you're feeding a meat first food and even more important, a high quality meat first food is going to ensure that your cat is getting all of the vitamins and nutrients that they need. Secondly, cats are not natural water seekers. In the wild, cats get the majority of their water intake from their kill. And in this case, adding wet food, adding raw food, or adding cooked meat that has that moisture in there is incredibly important. To mimic this natural water intake habit, you do need to add wet food, raw food, lightly cooked meat to the diet just to make sure that they're getting enough water in their system. Cats that don't get enough water in their system are more likely to develop kidney disease and urinary tract infections or bladder issues. In fact, one in three cats develop kidney disease, which is a lot for an almost completely preventable illness. Cats are also very weary of stagnant water sources. If you go all the way back into your survivalist brain here, you can kind of imagine why. When you're walking through the woods and you see a stagnant puddle, your brain's already telling you that's gross. That's full of stuff that'll make you super, super sick. Don't drink that. Whereas you're walking across a stream, and especially a fast moving stream, it's fairly clean, fairly safe water. On top of this, cats are also very attracted to the sound and the movement of water. It'll bring them closer to it, encourage them to drink. This is a little bit harder to recreate in your home, but this is also why your cat prefers drinking out of a faucet or a moving water. They do sell different water fountains for cats that you can experiment with to see if your cat has any more interest in drinking water. But your cat should be getting about eight ounces of water per day. And even if you think your cat drinks a ton of water, they're probably still not drinking enough. Try this little experiment. In the morning, empty their water bowl and measure out eight ounces of water. Pour it into the bowl, let them drink throughout the day, throughout the night, and the next morning, dump whatever is left back into that measuring cup and see how much water your cat truly drank. Chances are it's not the eight ounces that they need to stay healthy. This is why adding, again, wet food, raw food, lightly cooked meats are so, so, so important to the cat's diet. Lastly, let's talk about carbohydrates. So carbohydrates themselves are not necessarily bad. They provide a lot of the short-term energy that we need to continue functioning, but cats don't need nearly as much carbohydrate as we give them. Just because your cat can digest the high level of carbohydrates that's in their kibble doesn't mean they're meant to or that they should. High levels of carbohydrate can cause a lot of different issues to the body. This includes, but is not limited to, stress on the digestive system, exacerbates yeast, increases risk of diabetes, increases inflammation, increases risk of obesity, and increases the risk of cancer, among other things. When you look at a cat's biology, they really should only be eating two to 5% carbohydrate. When you compare this to the 35 to 50% carbohydrate in cheap kibble, and even the 20 to 30% carbohydrate in higher quality kibble, there's a 
big gap in what they should be eating and what they are consuming. Kibble relies on a really high quantity of carbohydrate in order to bind the ingredients together to give it that kibble shape, as well as to bulk out the food. So how do you bring that 20 to 50% back down closer to that two to 5% that they biologically should be eating? Well, again, wet, raw, or lightly cooked meats is ultimately gonna be the best way to supplement this diet. If you can't feed an entirely wet or raw diet, even just adding these more and more in with the kibble is going to create a much more well-balanced meal. By adding more meat, you're in turn feeding less kibble and less carbohydrate. If your cat's daily meal has 50% carbohydrate in it, but all of a sudden you start doing half canned and half dry, you've just knocked that 50% down to 25%, which is in a big difference and way, way better than what they were eating before. Ultimately, and as I'm sure you've seen here, kibble is not the ideal diet for cats. Kibble, again, was created for our convenience to make it easier on us. It's our responsibility as informed pet owners to right our wrongs as much as we can possibly afford. I get that not everybody can afford an all raw diet. I get that not everybody can afford an all wet diet. So adding as much of these elements as you can afford means that your cat is going to be much better off because of it. And while good quality pet food and poor quality pet food does play a role, even cats that are fed only the best kibble in the world, but still only that kibble, has a high chance of developing, again, increased inflammation, obesity, diabetes, higher risk of cancer, kidney disease, urinary complications. I know this can be a tough thing to hear, especially with all of the misinformation that gets circulated around regarding pet food. So definitely leave any questions that you have down in the comments below, as well as any other ideas for videos you would like me to make. I do have a nice little handout that details some of these issues that you wanna be aware of on my website, and that link is down in the description as well. Please just give this video a like and subscribe for more content. I do post every Training Tuesday and Feeding Friday, so you get a good mix of training behavior information as well as some nutritional advice. Ultimately, I hope you learned something today and you leave this video with just a little bit more information than you had before. I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a great rest of your day and um, bye.